All right, last night's Married at First Sight, the final dinner party was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. This is what reality TV is made for. Must see reunion event. There is nothing going on there at all. Every bride and groom returns. Oh, they're together. I called it. Don't yeah. tell me what I feel. You're not hurt. What? You don't give a f about me. But Jono, mate, shush your face. I'm talking. This was unbelievable. Let's get into it. So, first off, uh, Jono and Ali. Let's just go. The episode opens with this montage of Jono being like, I have no feelings for Ali. Uh, Ali's just a friend. Uh, there is no sexual spark with me and Ali. It's just platonic. Hard cut to a cinematically presented like montage of them kissing and hanging out. Uh, totally juicy. I wish we didn't have this spoiled. There is nothing there. And I can't wait for the reunion because yeah. Ali can say the same thing. montage basically of all the old people that left the experiment uh we get lucinda back we get timothy back we get all, uh, we get fucking ben back uh from ben and ellie disgusting uh the singer songwriter ben is back i've been unaware Nothing could prepare me though for the return of Collins. We're back. We're back. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's a reunion time. It's. There is so much thoughts going in my head. It's. <laughs> it's the reunion time. Wow. Ooh. This is tight. <laughs> Yep, that's right. Cringe Lord Collins is back and uh, he is cringier than ever. Uh, he says hi. He says he's basically excited to go to a dinner party. Does the whole like sad puppy like, last time I was here, I didn't get to see any dinner parties. So I mean, that'll be good. <laughs> we get like a weird Collins in Wonderland edit moment where he starts like looking around the fancy setting being like, wow, this is what I missed out on. Uh, totally cringe, totally disgusting. I am so glad Collins left early, but also like it's that kind of cringe you kind of enjoy. Like, I missed Collins as much as I didn't. So let's just get into it. There are two big scandals for this episode. Number one is uh, Jono and Ali. And honestly, this makes up like most of the episode. This makes up a good hour of television. Just them duke it out with everyone at the table. And the second thing is Tim and Sarah and a secret that Jono reveals and has been revealing to other contestants. We'll get into both of those in just a moment. The only other thing you need to know is that Jack and Tori, yep. Uh, Jack, the walking red flag is still with Tori and they seem to be doing well. Not only do they seem to be doing well, they genuinely look happy. Jack looks like a normal, functional, happy person here. Honestly, Jack has been terrible. Kind of a vibe this episode, minus his weird introduction where he's like sniffing Tori's hair. What the fuck was that? So strange. We are girlfriend and boyfriend. But they seem to have an arrangement where they call before bed, they call when they've got work breaks, and uh, they travel to see each other when they can. And Tori's gonna make the move up to Gold Coast. Honestly, I'm kind of happy for them. They fought tooth and nail every single dinner party. Do I think they're great people? No. Do I think their kid would be an absolute houseborn? Yes, but you know what? If they're happy together, I'm kind of happy. I mean, they look a lot happier than a lot of other couples, so whatever. Now, let's get into Jono and Ali. So, Jono and Ali show up without warning Lauren. So Lauren obviously is like heartbroken and devastated. Not because she's still in love with Jono, just out of principle it's hurtful. And she does a really compelling convincing talk to the camera where she talks about the fact that like, hey a heads up would have been really nice from Jono. I don't expect much from him, but a heads up would have been nice. But yeah, they show up and they are awful. They are nasty, nasty people. And this is so disappointing. I really like Jono. I had a lot of respect for him. He shredded without being really cocky. He, he did a lot of talk about his demeanor and the fact that he used to have anger issues and get really argumentative and he let those things go. I kind of admired him a bit. I thought his talk to Tristan about like self-acceptance was really powerful. Um, but what the fuck is this? The happiest I've been in one of these cars. I'm so glad we don't have to live in a secret anymore. Mm, you had to kiss a toad. <laughs> You had to slay a dragon. I had to slay a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in heaven. Aww, <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> 
He is so relentlessly cruel here. I didn't even know he had this in him. So, for example, in the car right here, Ali and Jono are talking in the car and uh, Ali basically goes, I'm so glad we're together. You know, uh, I killed the toad or something in reference to Ben. Now, Ben treated Ali like shit, so whatever. But the thing that really rubbed me the wrong way is Jono then goes to Ali. Yeah, and I slayed the dragon and laughed. Like, totally, totally cruel. And this is really disappointing because honestly, I would have been on board for Ali and Jono. Here's where Jono fucked up. Instead of just trying to leave every week and maybe Lauren kept him there, he kept saying stay. He kept saying he was trying to make it work while texting Ali. On top of that, he started sleeping with her again and probably would have gone to final vows with her if she hadn't caught on to the whole text message thing. So the fact that now he's sitting there and trying to pretend like, oh, she was the fucking worst. It was a toxic relationship that I was stuck in. Yeah, I slayed the dragon. Ali, you saved me is so, so cruel. Be a man and own what you did. Just be like, you know what? I'm glad I'm with you. You and I are a better couple. I wish it didn't go that way. I wish I didn't have to hurt Lauren in the process, but that was never going to work and she was really mean at the start. But this whole thing of acting like he didn't like anything about Lauren, she was just this toxic, awful woman the whole time is so, so cruel because we saw in the final weeks before the text messaging thing got revealed that he was genuinely happy with her and trying to make it work and wanted to make it work. Uh, total asshole move, total ick. And honestly, like walking red flag behavior, this is what like dating experts warn you about. If guys are sitting there going like, all my exes are crazy and nuts, they probably drove them a bit nuts or they're exaggerating because they have no emotional intelligence. On top of that, Ali is eating this shit up. This is so disappointing. So then they get to the dinner party and Ali snubs Lauren. <laughs> Hi, Ali. Actually... Uh, where's the bar? Thank you, you too. Let's get a drink, Ali. Yeah, let's get... <laughs> so rude. Blanked me. Like, girl, I didn't do anything to you. Like, you've got my sloppy seconds. You can say, like, hi to me. Like, I've got no issue with the girl, but now I do. Now it's a problem. It's just rude. She doesn't go up. She isn't a girl's girl. She doesn't go, hey, Lauren, uh, I know how this looks, but I swear I had no ill intent with Jono. We were just talking as friends. I'm sorry for how this looks. No, she completely snubs Lauren. Lauren even calls out and says hi, and Ali just totally ignores her. I genuinely think if they showed up and were respectful, Lauren would have chilled. And the reason I think this is because there's been interview clips from the Fitzy and Whipper, like special maths radio show they did where all the contestants joined up. And Lauren actually talked about it and said, yeah, Jono and I were never going to work. I'm happy for them. They're clearly a better couple. So I think in the moment I was heated because I just wish you would have told me because if you told me I would have been cool about it. I mean, we could have left. But it's all over now. Like, he wasn't cheating on me. He wasn't trying to deliberately deceive me. Um, but you know what it's like in, in these shows, if, if you're messaging another bride and then the producers find out and never finds out, we're going to go in. So it's like Lauren clearly can be composed. She clearly can get on board and be respectful. So it's like all you needed to do was show the same respect to her and it would have been fine. But instead they snub her and then it just gets worse from there. So at the dinner table, obviously Lauren starts going, well, this looks sus. What's going on here? Blah, 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 blah. And Jono is fucking despicable for this whole dinner party. He calls Lauren the nastiest woman he's ever met. He starts going like, you never loved me. You never cared about me. You were cruel. You didn't like me. You hated me. You're buying Lauren's She is entitled to feel upset she, about her. She's not I'm upset. happy for you. She's not upset. She doesn't give a f about me. She's faking it and you're Look. buying it. I feel bad for Lauren. I just feel that she's genuinely hurt. You don't give a do shit not, about me. You never yeah. did. Don't know. Do not tell me what I feel. If you try and tell me what I feel, we're going to have a serious problem. I've tried to explain it to you many times. You don't get it. You don't understand. Don't talk about what I don't get, Jono. All right? Do not even go there. No, I'll just try and explain it one more time. See if you can get explain it. Explain it, because I'm Do missing. not talk to me like that. Then I'm not here serious? at all. Don't, don't talk to me I'm then. I'm not going to talk to you at all. Do yeah, not perfect. talk to me like that. No, no, don't tell her to stop. This is who she is. You, you guys didn't see the half of it. You call me a dog. You call you me a dog. You are a dog. No. There you go. You are. There you go. You absolutely are. Lauren. You are you're the nastiest person I've ever met in my life, Lauren. You are you are horrible. You know what? If she treated him the whole relationship like she did in those first two weeks. I would sort of get where he's coming from here, even if I don't like how he's talking to her. However, she relentlessly apologized. She cried on the couch. She tried to make it work. He started sleeping with her again. He said he wanted to see it through. This is just so relentlessly cruel. And he's clearly trying to clutch to a narrative that Lauren is just this awful, awful, despicable, irredeemable woman.
woman so he doesn't need to be held accountable for anything he did wrong. You know, maybe just sit there and have your day in court. Sit there and just let her go off at you and just, just let it happen. She's clearly hurt. Ali, your new girlfriend is not helping. Ali's sitting there baiting Lauren. Literally. No, Ellie, Ellie, no. I left the experiment on week five. What? Are you serious? Oh, shit. This is a tough watch. Lauren has a really emotional breakdown to the camera where she talks about the fact that Jono is doing this nice guy act to make her look even worse. So she looks angry and she looks emotional. Really heartbreaking, really hard to watch. You don't care, you have no empathy. I've got no empathy now. Or okay. kindness, none. No empathy, no kindness. None in your body at all. Come on, guys. I think Jono went for such personal comments because it was kind of lessening the heat on him or what he's done to me. The only thing I disagree with Lauren about here is the fact that she said she was acting out to Jono because she felt something in her gut about Ali. When she was acting out to Jono in those early weeks, they hadn't even met Ali at that point. So I'm sort of like, mm, I'm not buying that. But aside from that, totally feel bad for Lauren. This was a tough, tough, watch. She got absolutely annihilated. Jono was cruel. And Ali, I honestly can't stand this total pick me energy sitting there watching Jono be an absolute snake, sit there and shit talk someone he used to sleep with, used to be intimate with in such a disrespectful fashion. You know, she's not seen there with alarm bells going like, oh, if he can do this to her, what if he does this to me? It seems like she's seen there going, he'll never do this to me because I never treat him like Lauren did. Lauren's the worst and Ben was the worst and we're the best. Like, I don't know where this came from from Ali. Ali seems sweet and caring and nice and had a tragic backstory and she is just nasty here. In fact, I would go as far to say that the way Jono and Ali behaved in this episode was some of the nastiest behavior of the season. I didn't get any flirty vibes off Jono. It was literally gossip about like the dinner parties and commitment ceremony. I even said to Ben on the phone. Ages ago, correct, you did. You go, I think Jono likes me. Yeah, you no, said I, said, yeah, I said, I think he has a crush on me. Yeah, oh. Jono, you're such a liar. I'm not. Yes, you, you are. are, mate. You are 100% full of shit. Ben. Ellie, don't care. I wish you well. You won't leave, I won't leave. End of story, move on. Who's got a problem with you? I don't give a shit if you have a problem with me. All you did was just bad mouth me, try to put me down. That's why. It makes sense. Are you serious? I gave you a hard time because you were being a dick. I was you're just being trying fake, to be. Mate. You had made up your shushy whole time. face. I'm talking. Do I just miss Ben? You were being fake. Mate. And I need to thank you. You stuffed up so bad in this experiment. I'm glad. Thank you. Genuinely, I am way more mad at Jono and Ali here than I've ever been at Jack. And I don't know if that's just because Jack is straight up with how shitty he is or what the fuck is going on, but I, I just can't stand them. This was a tough, tough watch. And it gets worse because then when everyone is giving shit, uh, Sarah starts giving shit to Jono. Jono starts pushing back and going, the only one that's cheated here is you. And then basically comes out with a smoking gun and says, yeah, well, Tim said that he didn't want to be with you after final vows. So... I heard Tim said that he felt like he was rushed at final vows. Then if he did have that time, he would have made a different decision. Oh, oh, oh. So basically the situation here is Tim opened up to Jono at some point after saying yes to Sarah in the final vows and basically said like, oh, it felt like a bit of a rush decision. If I had a bit more time, maybe the decision went the other way. This was apparently within a few days after final vows. Keep in mind, this dinner party is a month after final vows. And according to both Tim and Sarah, they've been really, really good since final vows. Now, if we want to hyper analyze this situation, I empathize with Tim here a bit. He was in a tough position. Sarah had cheated on him and had also been incredibly toxic, showing emotional and verbal abuse towards Tim. I get why he would have second thoughts and maybe some reservations, even if he said yes in the moment because he wanted the relationship to continue. And I even understand him opening up to Jono. However, the issue is Jono has held onto this information, waited until Tim and Sarah are going well and Tim is happy with his choice and thrown it as if it's new information. Now, I empathize with Sarah because I get why that's hurtful to hear. However, I think she needs to have the emotional composure to recognize that this is something that he said off the back of her her actions and isn't indicative of how he feels now. I get why she's hurt. I get why she's sad. However, the way she starts talking to him is incredibly toxic and goes back to how she's talked to him in the past. No, I didn't say that though. I didn't say yes, that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. He just said you did and you just admitted it. No, I said, it. I said it. we didn't have time to process it. And if we had a longer time to process it. Oh. oh. Tim looks so uncomfortable. He's sweating. Yeah, he's been sprung. <laughs> I'm literally venting to a mate. No. You vent to a mate and you tell me what you feel. 
Don't blindside me in front of everybody like that. And to Tim's credit, he knows he fucked up a bit here and I think handles it really, really well given the circumstance. However, as hurt as Sarah is, I think she needed to ease back just a little. But out of Sarah, Sarah moments this season, I do have a lot of understanding for her here. It's a tough situation. Get away from me, let's no, go. No, because I'm sick of it. We're sick of what? You say the stupidest shit, Tim. And I said this to you when you reached out to Jaden. I said, why are you saying that? You make it seem like it's wishy-washy, like things are so you're not right. okay. Right. You do it all the time. No, you're and right. if you like... don't want to be in this relationship, don't be in it. But who I am mad at most here is Jono. He is twisting Tim's words. He's making it seem like it's recent. He's trying to shit on their relationship. Tim's seen there going like, our relationship's going well, please stop. And Jono just goes, nah, well you said. And he purely does this just to deflect because everyone's coming at him at the table. It's totally cruel. And the worst part here is Jono starts laughing and taking joy in the fact that Sarah starts roasting Tim. Now Jono says to the table, Tim, you deserve better than Sarah. She treats you like shit. And you know what? Me at home, I have to agree. However, they've also been really good since the cheating scandal. Stay the fuck out of it, Jono. And if you are gonna put your foot in it, don't be so disrespectful. He's literally sitting there gleaming and happy that they're exploding and laughing. And Ali is sitting there egging him along, laughing with him. Totally disgusting behavior. I am appalled by these two. Oh, it I is. Was, I was talking to him about how, we, we were reminiscing about our times in this, in this experiment. I can like me. He did. He is laughing. I cannot believe this. That looks like so happy. John is just doing all of this to deflect, to stir the pot, from his and own throw stuff. that yeah the, the the spotlight onto other couples mm -hmm. and away from what he's been doing. I, I could do like a 30 minute rant on everything these two did wrong. I am disgusted. Now, I did not like how Sarah spoke to Tim. However, I have to give her some leeway here because I get why she's so hurt. However, I think Tim verbalized himself really well and did do a good job of explaining that was then, this is now, Jono's twisting this. And I love that Tim actually came back to the table and started roasting Jono and being like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Why are you trying to explode my relationship? Honestly, this was an incredible episode of Married at First Sight. This fight, this whole Jono Ali against the table, against Lauren, against Tim and Sarah went for like the whole hour. Uh, it was insane. I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. This episode though was hard to watch. Like genuinely sections where I was just sitting there like for like 10 minutes straight. Tim said that he felt. Don't. Sure, no. Don't. Like he was rushed to final vows. Then if he did have that time, he would have made a different what does, decision. Why would you do that? Uh, but honestly, Loved it, loved it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recap. Please subscribe. I'll be doing a video on the final commitment ceremony that airs tonight, tomorrow. Uh, on top of that, uh, subscribe. If I get to 2000 subscribers, I will be doing a full series recap with my favorite moments, uh, my favorite fights, my least favorite moments, whatever. Vote in the comments for what you want me to like rank or whatever. But thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Uh, what a great episode of Married at First Sight.